Hi everyone. Well, the sky remains cloudy and actually there's some Sahara dust, Sahara desert dust floating through our atmosphere along with the clouds. So once again, the telescope remains under cover and there's going to be no astronomy tonight. But you know, a lot of people have been asking me questions. How do I process my images? How do I get from the beginning to the end? Well, tonight I'm going to show you this. How do I go from this to this? That coming up. Welcome to Heavenly Backyard Astronomy. I'm Pat Prokop, and if you like my videos, please subscribe, uh, and you'll be notified if you ring that little bell anytime I add new videos. I also add sometimes some gardening videos as well. Also, if you have any comments, leave them below. I try to answer all those comments. Now, let me go upstairs to the computer and show you just exactly the process I go through after I do the astronomy with the telescope, and then the final process to get the picture. Grizabella. Grizabella. All right, the first thing I do is start Deep Sky Stacker. And um, let's say for the um, Trifid Nebula, I'm going to open up these files, and these are the flats right here. And, I mean, the FITS files right here. And I'm going to take all those right there, open them up. All right, there they are. Um, let's just first of all check all. And yeah, let's take a look at one of them. Uh, sure, it's going to look kind of goofy. Bring this level up here, and you can well, you can actually see it right there. Okay. Um, all right. And the next one. Let's see, was that? Yeah. Okay. Let's just check them all. There's not that many to check. I think I have 15 here. Okay. All right. So, next thing I got to do is all of the darks. And I got my darks right here, and this is the 300 seconds at uh, the 450 gain. So I'm going to click all those. I think I have 30 of them right there. And, whoops, wrong button. Yeah, all those, okay. And I'm going to click my flats, and I have those over here. I uh, did in the flat wizard. And again, um, the gain was at, um, I did 50 of these, I think. Yeah, uh, 49. I, wrong key again. All right. All my flats. Now, just to take a, just a quick peek here. Um, these are the darks. Now you can see a dark nebula. Let me just really push it up. There you can see the lamp glow there and some light at the top or you know, glowing at the top and glowing at the bottom. This is what the dark takes out. Okay, let's go to the flats. Right here, let's pick on a flat. Well, I got it too high now, obviously. And this is what a flat looks like for that image night. You see the little donut right there? It'll take that out. It, that's in the image, so that's going to take that out. It's amazing how this works. Okay, the next thing I want to do is uh, go to my uh, settings, make sure I have it set. Registered settings. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get that in a second. Uh, settings, stacking settings. I want to make sure I have the drizzle off because I used a one by one binning on this. I could turn the drizzle on, but that's going to make a huge file. But when you do two by two binning, that brings it back up almost to the same size as the one by one binning if you drizzle. Okay, we'll keep it at that. All right. So, everything's ready. Register, check pictures. Let's do advance. Let's count the number of stars. And it found 164 stars at 11% uh, threshold. That's pretty good. That's in that sweet spot somewhere between 100 and 200. Say, okay, let her rip. It tells you, okay, you got 14 frames, uh, total exposure, one hour and 10 minutes. And I didn't know offsets, but I got my uh, uh, 30 dark frames and 50 flat frames. So let her rip, and there she goes. And it's adding all the dark frames right now. There you go. We'll, we'll speed through this.
Now it's going to register the 14 frames. Remember, these are five minute frames, so that's, that's over an hour. That's an hour and 10 minutes worth. Just water. All right. Now it's stacking. Two, three, four, so on, so on. Okay. Computing the final picture. Saving the final picture as a TIFF file, and then it's going to display it. And this is what it looks like. Um, I can maybe modify, but I don't really care what it looks like in, in Deep Sky Stacker because um, it's it's always kind of washed out. So the next thing I do is I go to Pixinsight, which is right there. All right. Now let's open up the picture and it was um, the Trifa Nebula in the light uh, directory and this was autosave number five so I've done some earlier. And that's what you first see. Now if you just uh, uh, um, stretch this, watch what happens. A lot of green in there. Uh, that's the, uh, you know, the two um, green pixels out of the RGGB camera since it's an all one-shot color camera. So what you want to do is, is get this green out of here. There's several ways of doing it, but the easiest way is to me is in Pixinsight. What I'm going to do is go to Automatic Background Extractor and uh, just leave the defaults alone. And I, you can select Subtraction or Division. Subtraction usually works better. Just click on that, and I just discard the uh, background model and replace the target image. You don't have to uh, do that, but it, I just want the one image up there. So, uh, okay, then when you're ready, you hit the execute uh, apply function, and it's going to turn black again. Watch. Oh, no, maybe not. Okay. Um, there it is. Uh, first of all, you know, now, the next thing I want to do, it, it took the green out. See that? All right, next thing you want to do is you want to uh, do an image background neutralization or naturalization. Neutralization, I was right. All right, and I want to take an area that is basically neutral. This one looks the best right here. Let's zoom in on that. Whoops, wrong way. I can zoom in on that using the wheel on my mouse. Uh, let's take that. The stars are a little elongated, aren't they? Oh well. Uh, let's just take this one here. Whoops, I've got to click on this right here. See it up here? Click on that. That's all I need. Now let's, while we're here, as we say, while we got the hood up, I'm going to um, take another preview rectangle. I want it for the white balance or color correction. Just going to pick on that one. So that's preview two, and the other one was preview one. All right, so the background neutralization, I'm going to go preview one. Let's see here. Select on this one, preview one. And you put it over here, you can see that's what your background selected was like. Okay, you can say okay, and then activate it right here. Apply. You're not going to see much of a change usually here. So the next one you want to do is the color calibration. Very important. So I want to select the number two preview. You know that big green one? See, there, there it is. Right? That's what I selected. And say OK. And then again, you want that background image, reference background. Uh, that was image number one. See it right there? OK, OK, OK. That's going to darken it up a little bit. Over here, just uh, stretch it again. Okay, um, I can change the uh, stretching on this by opening up the curve transformation. Um, 
open up a preview window here and let's just bring it down just a little bit that's that's good right there okay execute it now I'm going to say okay I can uh, close that up I don't need the previews anymore so I can delete those now the next thing I got to do is called a uh, uh, it's called histogram transformation uh, if I save it right now, it'll look like the very first image that I opened up, which is not what I want. So what you want to do is you take the, uh, the image information from this screen here and just slide it down into here and then execute. Now it's going to turn white. That's okay. Just click on this little guy over here. Now that's the image I want to save. So I'm going to file, file save as, and... I want to go here, trip it. Let's call it um, auto save five. That's good. I want to save it as a 16 bit unsigned integer and just keep the defaults here and say OK. All right, the image is saved. Um, all right, the next thing I want to do is open up Photoshop. And I want to open up that image, open. And I have it already preset into that directory. And there it is, the one I just saved, auto save number five. So open that up. Okay. And uh, so the first thing I do is I go into my filter and I go into um, camera raw filter. And it goes me, it takes me into this index here. And what I like to do is play with these values here. And this is where you can go really crazy. But anyways, I usually bring the highlights down just a little bit and the shadows up or like you know you, you play with it and the the whites are usually if you bring them down a little bit you bring the contrast down to bring more more nebulosity or um, brighten it up um, you can darken it to bring away some of the background uh, uh, activity you can go into this one in here helps with the color saturation you can bring in more of the reds see how the reds yeah. uh, you can bring in that uh, the oranges too I want to get this blue too so let's see if we can bring that out and I see it a little bit in the cyan and the blue a little bit more blue we'll get the intensities a little bit later there you play with these guys here there's not gonna be much in the magenta and the purples going to luminosity you can bring out the magenta a little bit more see how that goes up See how that's going up over here? Um, okay. Uh, blues. Yeah. But I'm also making these stars blue too, so keep that in mind. Uh, what about the reds? How about this red in here? Let's work on that. Bring that in a little bit more. See? Too much? Too little? I think I bring it down. That way it brings less light in the middle here. Same with the orange. I don't know, I'm bringing out the orange, I have a higher yellows, any yellows? Usually I don't have much of the green because I, I took a lot of that out with the uh, background extraction. Okay, well that's good. Um, let's go back to the uh, core over here and um, let's go with texture. Now watch what happens when I play with this little value here. So I can smooth it out and blur it or sharpen it. See how the stars pop? So the stars are going away. Anyway, usually I'm going to pick for nebulosity, I bring it down just a little bit. And then for the clarity, this one right here, I bring that up a little bit. See how it, it makes it a little bit sharper. And then the dehaze will help clear out some of that uh, additional noise. And the vibrance will bring out additional highlights in the color. See if I take it down, take it up, see how the vibrance vibrance changes and the color saturation I can bring that up a little bit more if I wanted to okay so far so good I'll say okay there you go that's what I have so far I, I like to do one more step uh, I'll go into um, image adjustments and what I like to do is selective colors you get this right here now watch what happens uh, you have all these different color channels to play with and what I like to use is the preset default and the absolute um, method of, uh, instead of relative, I take the absolute changes. Okay. Now, uh, what I like to do is, see, look what happens when you, you play with these colors. You can pump them up. Look at that. Pump that up. 
Now the magenta actually is yellow. I just like to leave that alone. So let's put that back to zero. I used the keyboard for that. The yellows, let's see what happens. Yeah, put that back to zero. The intensity, you can, okay. All right, that's the reds. And then you can play with the yellows. I don't think you're gonna be much yellow uh, going on in here. You can first, you can tell it by looking at the blacks if, if there's any changes. There's a little bit of changes. Uh, we'll just put it there. All right, well, let's go to the Siam because I want to work with these guys here. Um, so I'll increase that. See how I take it away? It goes. Uh, I can increase it. I can make it more blue. Uh, I don't want to make it more. Look at that. You can make it really blue. Um, I'm, it's, that's not realistic anyway, but uh, let's, let's bring that back. That's more realistic there. And then, see? I can pump up those colors there. I think there's a little bit of a blue in here that will change. All right, well, not much. You can do it here. A little bit. Uh, I like it over here. Again, you, you can play with these all day long and um, what have you. Okay, and I don't think you're going to see anything with the magenta. You can tell by looking at the, the black level. All right, and then you have the, uh, the whites. Watch what happens when you play with these guys. See, see the stars? They all turn weird colors. That's it. Hit the keyboard back to zero. Uh, again, um, these are all weird. You can use them, but usually not much. Okay, I, I didn't do anything with the whites. The neutrals, sometimes you have success with those. See now, if we really want to bring out the red in the trifid portion of the nebula, that looks pretty. That looks interesting there. Um, don't like that at all. Um, again, that's no good. And then the blacks, way too much, way too little. Just leave it alone. Okay, and then finally, the black blacks. All right. And that's too much. And usually I don't change these at all. Because you see what happens? Not much. And you can play with this one a little bit. There's basically the way it was. And say, okay, there you have it. Um, so I went from basically a, almost a black and white image to the beautiful color image. Now, I got, in this one, I, I think there's too much blue in here and so forth, but I did one earlier and this was the, um, the result. Let's see if I can find it here. Um, right there. I had that one. Uh, there's another one I had. I like that one a little bit better. So, well, there you have. Uh, there you have it. That's how I do it, from one to another. So um, hopefully you may have learned something out of this. Uh, and if not, well, thanks for watching. But anyway, uh, unless you need clear skies, <laughs> so unless you need rain, clear skies, everyone. <laughs>